Hey guys, Brennan Mejia here. Today we're going to react to Watch Mojo's The Dark Story Behind Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. As someone who played a Power Ranger myself, I'm very interested to see what they have to say. Let's get into it. It's Morphin Time! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing the dark story behind Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The five of you have come together to form as fine a group of superheroes as there has ever been. No way! Way. Really? Really? For this video. We'll be looking at the grim, behind-the-scenes details of the beloved 90s hit series. Grim. Were you a fan of the Power Rangers? I was. Who was your favorite? Me. Go, go, let us know in the comments. <laughs> the original series. Back in the 1980s, Toys. music composer Hayam Saban was watching TV in his Tokyo hotel room and came across the Japanese Tokusatsu Super Sentai series. I bumped into this very colorful show Five kids in spandex kicking monster butt. Monster thought, butt! This looks like fun. I met Saban one time, by the way, when I got cast in Dino Charge. Our whole cast, well, not all of us, the ones, the, the core cast, got to meet him uh, at his giant building in LA. Meeting Saban, it, there was an intimidating air about him just because we all knew that he owns this crazy, super well-known IP, and then also a bunch of other ones too. The amount of money in this building just made me go, dang, this guy is a successful businessman. Teleport to us five overbearing and over-emotional humans. Overbearing and over-emotional humans. That's correct, Alpha. I was afraid of that. That could have been toddlers too, if you think about it. Overbearing, over-emotional humans. Terrible twos. What would have happened then? Since the actors' faces were under helmets, Saban used footage from Kioru Sentai Zoo Ranger true. and other Super Sentai series for also the true. fight scenes. However, the cast did perform some of their own stunts. Also true. So that's a big difference between Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Dino Charge, which was my season. They did more of their own stunts than we did. It's not that my cast, depending on which ranger, couldn't do the stunts. It's just a time thing. By the time Dino Charge was around, it became a well-oiled machine to where we had two different units. Uh, one was basically all the acting stuff, while the other unit was doing all the stunt stuff in the suits. And then we also used stunt footage that was already filmed in Japan in the suits. But whenever there was original suit footage filmed in New Zealand, they would use our stunt team, not us. So I was in a suit a couple times, but it was when my helmet was off. Not when the helmet was on, unfortunately. I know it's sad, sorry, I wish I was in it more because I can do some stunts, but we had really awesome stunt people, so it's okay. The theme song was pretty awesome too. Amazing. Go Power Rangers! Do, 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 do. With the massive popularity of us. the series, it wasn't long before the merchandise was flying off the shelves. It was just blowing out of the stores. I had so many Power Ranger toys when I was a kid. My parents were very, I, I was very fortunate or spoiled, depending on how you look at it. They would get me a bunch of Power Ranger toys because I loved watching Power Rangers. Toys, costumes, video games, comics, bed sheets, toothbrushes. I had the bed sheets. Saban Entertainment and Bandai created a multi-billion dollar merchandising empire. That's crazy, billion, not million, billion, and multi, Billion. With all the hype surrounding the show came sudden fame for the young cast, something they had to adjust to fast. I did not like the amount of people who suddenly knew who I was, but I don't know who they are. I think that that really freaked me out. So depending, different people handle fame differently. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was way more famous than any other season of Power Rangers, and rightly so, because it's what started all of it. Dino Charge is popular in its own right, but it wasn't to the level of this. So I don't think I ever dealt with the same level of fame that these people have, um, this cast, at least not at this point in my career. I'm not that famous, so yes, do I get recognized still? I do, but it's, not often enough to where I can't like go get a cup of coffee without people going, oh my gosh, it's Brennan Mejia. Nothing like that. It's occasionally I'll get people looking at me and like I can tell they're thinking about it or I'll see a, a group of like teenagers at the gym and they're like on their phones looking and they're looking at me. That's happened a couple times. Then occasionally one will come up and be like, yo, were you, you the Red Ranger? I was like, yeah, oh dude, bro, you were my childhood. Like, that's cool. And like, oh, can I get a selfie? That's really as far as it goes. So Kimberly by and large is a lot of guys first crushes and guys can be creepy sometimes, so I imagine her 
interactions were different than mine on some level. Um, but mine are mostly pretty PG and like really cool with like, oh, you're so awesome. Like, thanks for being in Power Rangers. Oh yeah, thanks for watching, you know. Low wages and poor working conditions. Power Rangers proved to be a lucrative venture for Zaban and the higher ups. But the cast quickly realized that they weren't getting the pay they deserved. Yeah, this is where I figured this video was gonna go because for Saban to be a billionaire, unless everyone is making a lot of money, certain individuals are making way more money. Now again, as a businessman, he's obviously very successful. I don't know the business practices that he had with this. Maybe they're gonna reveal it in a minute. But yes, I think, I, I like paying people the wages they're worth. So again, depending on who you ask, people say it's different. But I mean, I know it's gotten better since Mighty Morphin. Um, but in some ways still, at least when I did Power Rangers, it was nowhere near what a normal rate would be for a lead in a TV show. But let's see what goes on. They worked long hours, sometimes 12 to 15 hour days, Same. six days a week, Same. and reportedly made about $600 a week with zero residuals. So I can't speak to, we made more than $600 a week, but we got paid in New Zealand currency. And then if you also take the exchange rate into account, we lost a good portion bringing it back to America. But then also with inflation, I don't know what $600 in American dollars was worth back then, but I imagine it was stronger than what I was paid in New Zealand money now, potentially. I, I want to say we got paid more than that a week, but I honestly, with inflation, I, I don't know if you take the exchange rate into account too. And yes, no residuals for sure. So when I did Dino Charge, non-union, no residuals. So many people just assume because I was on TV, like, oh, you're a Power Ranger and there's toys with your face on it. You must be like rich and loaded. Not true. I don't get any money from any toy that someone buys unless I'm like signing a toy from someone at a convention. Uh, but I don't get like royalties when people buy a toy. None of my cast does. And it's not like the actor has to take the job. That's the other thing. You have to remember, we're not forced to sign these contracts, but a lot of us, if we don't sign it, they're gonna hire someone else. So it's like, well, do you take the money they're offering or do you say no, even though you know the money's not worth it? But if you say no, someone else is gonna immediately take it, especially for an IP like Power Rangers. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just letting you know that's how it is. As an ununionized show and as actors without agents, there wasn't okay. anyone to advocate for better pay or improving poor working conditions. Your agent helps negotiate contracts and even my agents tried to negotiate more for Power Rangers, but basically they were met with resistance that this is the contract, take it or leave it. And that's really what it was. It was either I would take it as it is or I wouldn't be on the show. And I really wanted to be a Power Ranger, so I took it. Amy Jo Johnson detailed the time when she and David Yost were almost injured in an onset accident hmm. and revealed that she and Tweet Trang once had to work the morning after an earthquake. Controversy over the years. Since its debut, the Power Rangers have had their fair share of controversies. The show was banned in multiple countries for its excessive violence. That fact is ridiculous to me in modern culture because it's unbanned in a lot of countries now. So New Zealand, where we filmed Power Rangers, Power Rangers wasn't allowed to air, but yet we could film it there. Which to me, if you're trying to make a point that something shouldn't be in your country because it's too violent, but then you'll take the money by allowing it to be filmed there, just, I don't know, that seems kind of like you're trying to keep your hands clean, but you're like, but we'll take a paycheck and you can use our land to film. That's just weird. I don't know, but it's allowed there now. But there's so many more shows that are quote unquote kid shows that are also just as violent, I feel. Like Justice League had action and monsters and things and explosions and, you know, all the kid, like X-Men as a kid, you know? So I don't know why Power Rangers got like, maybe because it was like the first live action or one of the bigger live action ones. Um, they thought kids would like actually beat each other up. Maybe they did, I don't know. But I feel like it was kind of hypocritical for certain shows to be allowed and then other shows not for violent reasons, but whatever, I don't make the rules. In 1994, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark pulled the show from the airwaves after the tragic death of a young girl at the hands of classmates. Oh, see, I didn't know that story. <sighs> yeah, I guess, I mean, was the death because they watch Power Rangers? I don't know. If people watch certain types of media and their parents aren't there to like tell them, hey, by the way, this is make-believe, this isn't real, don't go actually fight. Like if that's not instilled, then perhaps those kids may go do violent things and beat people up, unfortunately, because kids mimic a lot of what they see. It's hard to be like, it's Power Rangers fault, or is it more like because kids weren't instilled with good 
values and morals and explained about it. Like I remember when I was younger and I'd watch certain things, my, my dad was very adamant about explaining like, by the way, this is fake, this isn't real, um, this show is just make-believe, this isn't actually like, he would tell me that and so I never went around beating people up for Power Rangers, but it did make me want to do martial arts. So there's the other side of the coin. It inspires people to want to get into self-defense and learn discipline, so, you know. Even though there was no direct connection between the two. Okay, so no direct co connection between the two, so maybe they didn't watch Power Rangers, so I don't know why they took it off then. Never mind. Malaysia, Vietnam, A lot of countries. and the Philippines ban the word Morphin from the title and anywhere in the series, fearing it was too close to Morphine, the drug. That's interesting. Again, different cultures. I, I can't speak for the world, right? And be like, well, that's ridiculous. To me, that's ridiculous because yes, morphine and morphine, I guess, can sound similar, but like anytime I said it's morphine time when I was a kid watching Power Rangers, not once did it make me want to go do morphine. So I don't know, but all right. Country's gonna country, government's gonna govern. Aside from censorship issues, Power Rangers garnered criticism for the racial coding of the Black Ranger being played by a black man and the Yellow Ranger by an Asian American woman. However, Jones says it was purely coincidental, and the first Yellow Ranger in the unaired pilot was played by Hispanic actress Audrey Dubois. I felt like for people of color it was really inspiring. Overall, it was inspiring for everyone. Yeah, I mean, Walter has a good point. The person who played the Yellow Ranger in the pilot wasn't Asian. So, yes, could he have gone out of his way to hire someone else? But if the actor they found who was best for the role after the initial person turned it down in the pilot or whatever happened and got recast, happened to be Asian, do you not give them the job because someone's gonna think it's racist or do you give them the job and now you're employing someone? You know what I mean? Like, but I do understand what people mean. Like, oh, the Black Ranger's black and yell. Yeah, I get it. But again, back then, it was one of the first shows to be so diverse. Perhaps the darkest of the MMPR controversies is one that not many have discussed. It wasn't until years after his time on the series that David Yost spoke out about the reason behind his departure. Writers, directors, it's not that people can't talk about me and have their opinion about me, but continuing to work in a, an environment like that uh, is really difficult. In 2010, Yost revealed in an interview that he was subjected to onset harassment for his sexual orientation, and the crew regularly used homophobic slurs when talking about and to the actor. Basically, I just felt like I was continually being told I'm not worthy of where I am because I'm quote unquote a gay person and I'm not supposed to be an actor and you can't be a superhero. That's sort of the vibe that I was getting. This mistreatment led to Yo suffering a nervous breakdown for which he had to be hospitalized. So that story I haven't heard personally. I've heard rumors of it, but not to this level of it all being pieced together as it was. But yeah, that's not cool, obviously. Not cool, I would not be cool with that either. Um, we were fortunate to not have that issue in my season with anyone being like anti someone's orientation. The, the voiceover from Watch Mojo was saying that cast members were saying this and this, but the clips they used of David Yost didn't have him saying that specifically. So I don't know what words he actually said, because he said that's the vibe he got, and the Watch Mojo was like, well, these people said these things but they didn't have the clip of David saying these people said these things. So I don't know if they're putting words in his mouth or what was actually there. So, but again, if that actually did occur, that's not cool and I agree. But being a Power Ranger actor myself or not, that's just, be respectful, you know, be cool. Jason David Frank's Tommy Oliver remains a recurring character in the franchise, appearing in Power Rangers Turbo, Power Rangers Dino Thunder, and Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel just to name a few. Rest in peace, I'm assuming this was made before. After exiting the show, Austin St. John returned to martial arts, but later went to college and spent time working as a paramedic in Washington, D.C. He also reprised his role as Jason in a few series, like Power Rangers Wild Force and Power Rangers Beast Morphers. I worked with him in that one, ha <laughs> Forever Red was amazing, and I really wish they would do a Forever Red too, on account that we don't really know what Hasbro's doing with Power Rangers going forward, and they just had the auction where they sold all the Power Rangers suits, essentially. Johnson, Jones, Yost, Frank, and St. John make regular appearances around the convention circuit.
often reuniting for events and interviews. I've done a lot of cons with Walter and Austin and David Yost in attendance, but Walter specifically, not only have I gotten the honor of doing cons with him, but we've done a lot of panels together too. And he's just so humble and he'll like talk about how, yeah, you know, everyone's like, Mighty Morphin started it. He's like, yeah, but all the newer seasons, you're what keeps it going. So thank you guys for keeping the show interesting. So it's just cool that he validates us by not being like, oh man, you guys aren't the originals. Everyone hates, you're not as good. He talks about like, no, it's so cool. Like I had my time on the show. Now you guys are keeping the show alive and the in just in the IP of Power Rangers alive and interesting, which is just really cool to, to witness and hear firsthand, so. Now, I don't regret my time on Power Rangers, but I do have some Power Ranger related regrets. To find out what those are, watch this video.